everyone, and welcome to episode three of Teaching Tales. I am your host, Brent Coley, and today I am edu-stoked to be joined by the edu-awesome Bill Self. Bill, thanks for joining me today, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Brent. All right, so Bill, uh, go ahead and tell us a little about yourself. So, my name is Bill Selleck. I am Director of Technology at Hillbrook School up in the Bay Area. Before that, I was teaching kindergarten, second grade, fourth and fifth grade music. Fantastic. And you've been, is it, you've been up at Hillbrook for three? Third year. Third year? Third year up here, yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. So oh, yeah. Fantastic. Well, I love following your, your posts on Twitter and Instagram. You're doing some awesome Awesome stuff up there. So awesome, thank you. Yeah. So, well, again, uh, Bill, as and and mom and dad, thanks for listening, uh, or anyone else who's listening. My brother Greg, thanks for listening too. As you guys know, that the the, the format is this whole thing is about sharing stories. Uh, Bill, how many how many years in education? Did did you say that? Did I miss that? I did not say it. Oh. How? Let's round up to the nearest hundred, so one hundred years. One hundred so in a hundred years. That's a lot of you got a lot yeah, of yeah. you got a lot yeah. of stories to tell. So I do. It's been about ten. <laughs> okay. Years. Well, it, ten years is enough too to have a lot of stories to tell. So, <laughs> so today we're going to tell some stories about risk taking. Episode two, if you guys listened to that, was about risk taking. When I talked about it, uh, flexible seating with one of my third grade teachers. But, Bill, from an admin perspective, you were going to share a story. Tell us a story about how you took a risk from admin's perspective. Yeah, so it's great. I'll, I'll premise it by saying that um, our school has four core values. Be kind, be curious, take risks, be your best. Uh, feel free to use any or all of those, by the way, at your school. Uh, and we, we really live by them. I remember when I was interviewing for this position, um, I asked my now boss, Mark, our head of school, like, so, so people, like, mention risk-taking, right? He's like, "Uh uh-huh. Well, and it's on your website, "Uh uh-huh, but you actually do it. He's like, yeah, (laughs) I'm totally confused. (laughs) Like, I have not been at a school before where people, like, live out their core values, right? Like, I was immediately drawn to that, uh, and it it resonates so much. Um, And so what what I'm able to do, I think, in ways that um, other tech directors aren't as comfortable doing is that... um, our school really embraces the willingness to be able to take risks, mm-hmm. right? Like there isn't this expectation that whatever you do has to work out no matter what. So what we're able to do kind of culturally is, is be able to move very, very quickly through things. And it's not, I'm trying something new. Yeah. And it, it, what like that doesn't matter. Like the expectation is to always try something new. Right? Exactly. And always kind of be pushing it. Right. So, so with that kind of as a, a backdrop to the story, um, there's this thing called Hour of Code. Have you heard of it? I, I have. We participated with uh, our students as well, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so my first year here, so this is my third year, uh, first year we had not done anything as a school. There was kind of one teacher that had tried it once when it first came out. Uh, and so as part of Computer Science Education Week, we're like, you know, send something out to everyone. Our, again, the, you know, year one. Uh, there's this thing called Hour of Code. You know, as part of Computer Science Education Week, you would be great if you want to participate i'm happy to support you know here's a couple ideas let me know a couple teachers tried it and it was fantastic and then year two it was like all right you know it's time to take a risk Uh right all right so instead of just you know hey here's this thing it's how about if we get every single student to participate in hour of code and not just do an hour right let's do two hours um and instead of just like hourofcode.com which is fun and safe let's bring in teachers and parents and office and support staff and have everyone run these centers. Um, Because for me, the whole idea of everyone can code is students being able to find themselves and see themselves as coders, as computer scientists. Yes. Right? So, well, hourofcode.com is great. Um, It felt like that was the first step. So, (laughs) year two, at the end of my first full year, uh, we, we decided to have a dozen different stations, right? And students could sign up ahead of time. Um, we're junior kindergarten through eighth grade, so 10 grades. Um, so we broke it into to middle and lower school. Yeah. Um, and had students sign up. They got to choose their top three. And then we would assign them tickets or groups and say for the first hour, 
you're going to go into this session for the second you're going to be in this one. Um, so, we, you know, we had, had dabbled in and, and tried and tested a couple different things um, leading up to it, you know, so we knew we would have some successful centers uh, and then talked with a whole bunch of people, you know, Q Steampunk, those folks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so talked a lot with the, the people there at Fall Q. It was uh, actually their first version of, of the, what ended up being the steampunk playground. Just different people brought different robots, different hands-on things to try and make coding come alive more. Um, so I took a couple ideas from that, like an obstacle course with Spheros. So, you know, like if you were to, to just hop on YouTube and type in Sphero, you're like, cool, here's the, this little robot the size of a softball, and I can race it, and I can jump it. Yeah. Right? Like, doesn't seem very educational, but then you get an app called Tickle, and suddenly you can code the Sphero. And so, you know, one lesson I just flat out stole from Sam Patterson was the Sphero obstacle course. So students, just using blue painter's tape, had to design their own obstacle course on the ground and then code the Sphero robot through it. Pro- made all the problem thing. solving involved to make yeah, it turn, exactly. turn left here, turn right there. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, all kinds of computational thinking, all kinds of math. You know, so we had first graders talking about 90 degree turns, 180 degree turns. What does 50% power look like? You know, all this crazy math and physics and science is going on. Uh, but it's hour of code and it's fun, right? Yeah. It's like the coolest way to, to trick students into getting excited about computer science. Uh, one other one that I stole directly from um, Falk Hugh, Brian Briggs did, what did he call it? The Q Air Core. Hmm. Right, and so you get these collapsible or like put togetherable hula hoops, right? And then you put that on PVC pipe, and so it ends up being this Quidditch style hula hoop. Oh. <laughs> then, uh, these little parent mini drones, you know, that'll land in the palm of your hand. Um, you can take off, right? And again, you're coding all of this. Sure. It used to be with tickle. Now it's with the different app with the drones. You can take off go to this elevation, fly forward for this many seconds, go to the, you know, yeah. rotate this many degrees. Um, so, you know, just, just flat out stealing ideas from, you know, friends that I've gotten to know through Q. Um, Computer Science Education Week had a bunch of different ones. But, um, you know, basically just set up a dozen different, you know, hands-on, even hourofcode.com, right? Not yeah. still hands-on, right? Yeah. Um, setting up all these different things and then having every single student in our school participate in two of these sessions. So to have three of us set up, um, you know, 12 stations twice and then try and get 12 parents or faculty or staff to help and then coordinate all of that. Um, it was a lot and we just went for it, you know. So uh, we did it and it ended up being actually really, really amazing. And looking at it, where it's been like a year and a half now later, um, people are like, actually, you know, using code, it's not like, what is this weird coding thing? Yeah. You know, you walk into math class and occasionally you're going to see them hop into coding, whether it's JavaScript or, um, you know, learning the, the new Swift Playgrounds app where they're learning the, the Swift programming language. Um, it just, it's popping up here and there in first grade. You're seeing robots pretty regularly with students learning how to use it. Um, it's It's been really cool, but there's this moment, you know, where we're like, all right, here's what we're going to do. Yeah. Can we deliver on this? Yeah. Um, and it, it ended up just being a home run, and it has really led us down this path of, you know, computational thinking and, and coding just being a part of, um, of school life. That's what I was just going to, as you were saying that, I was going to say, rather than just a, a once-a-year type thing or it – it's it's the culture. It's what it's embedded, which is what it's supposed to be. It's right. I, I saw a tweet earlier today. It's something about like computers or technology. It should be part of what we do, not a destination, not something you just do in the lab. So that's right. that's and and I mean I I think I can guess the answer to this. But what what were the students' reaction to? I mean, I, I would just imagine they were running to school during those days when you had all the centers and stuff set up? I mean, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. The, the two things that surprised me, I mean, the students we knew were, were going to love it, and they did, and some, you know, some of the, the different stations were home runs, and some were just, I don't know, triples, or I don't know what the baseball analogy would be. <laughs> like, they were all great. Some were amazing. Um, two things really surprised me, though, is that a handful of parents got really excited about coding, 
and I got a handful of, of emails and just, you know, stopping into the tech office. Hey, well, how, where can I get one of these spheros for my kid? Or my kid's really excited about coding. What's the next step? You know, what are these little mini drones? And, and what app do I need so my kid can code and doesn't just play with it? Um, that was amazing. And that, that continues. You know, I, I tend to be like a, a go-to person now for like, yeah. what do I get my kid for Christmas? Uh, and the other thing was actually staff, so non-teaching employees at our school, uh, by taking a big risk and, and inviting them who aren't teachers and who aren't in the classroom and who aren't computer scientists yeah. to help run and lead and teach and facilitate these coding sessions. Uh, a lot of them have actually taken an interest or at the very least kind of this comfort, this demystification, uh, where when we talk about computers or coding or whatever, even if it's just, you know, my computer won't print, it's not this mysterious thing, it's, you know, I'm able to troubleshoot this, and if I can't troubleshoot this, like, uh, it's it's not as crippling as it used to be. Yeah. Um, so you know, even, even outside of the classroom, it's it's been um, more of a shift than I anticipated. And, That's you know, there have been people, you know, in a year or two of, of the everyone can code, uh, hearing people who are like, hey, can I help out again this year? Oh. You know, like really just... Music, music, that. music, and that's just music to your ears, but but that's the that's the great thing is when you get the when you get the adults, the teachers thinking like, I don't I don't necessarily have to know this right now. I could learn it. And the kids, I mean, I was I had the opportunity to take five of our excuse me, four of our fifth graders to our county office of ed. And they had an event, an hour of code event up there where they invited superintendents and and directors from all over the county and the students from my school and a couple other schools. The whole day was the kids were coding and they were the teachers. And you had adults over their shoulder and they were showing them how to do it. And it was, I mean, it was, number one, the kids, the kids were rock stars because they're doing the stuff that the adults are like, what do you do? I mean, pulling out Scratch and, and just OurCode.com and things like that. But, I mean, one of our students, the greatest comment when I asked him, we did a little interview afterwards, and I said, what was the best part about this? And he said, I loved teaching the adults. He said, I've That's never, awesome. and, he, and he does this at home all the time, but he said, I've never had as much fun by myself as I did with the adult next to me showing her how to do it. So, no, that's that that is fantastic. That's that's I mean, awesome. And just uh, going back to like what you said, it's easy to say, take risks. It's easy to to throw it in a mission statement or something like that. But but to do it is is it's hard <laughs> because because there's everyone likes to be comfortable. Stepping out of the comfort zone is 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 hard sometimes, but. As a, as a principal myself, one of my goals is to provide that safe, that safe environment so that they know, you know what, if I try something new and it doesn't go well, that's okay. I mean, I tweeted a little while ago, I, I, something along the lines of, I would rather see, and I'm, I mean, I'm sure you would agree with me, I would rather see, I would go into, rather go into a teacher's classroom and see them trying something new in an attempt to engage students and have it not go perfectly, then see a quote unquote perfect lesson that isn't engaging. Right. They're 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 in work they're doing worksheets and rows or, and yeah, they're on task, but are they enjoying it? Are they engaged? Are they gonna go home and say, Wow, guess what I did today? I did I did five worksheets. I mean it, it's said no student ever. Yeah. So yeah, that that's just not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. and the, the tricky part, you know, like at, at this scale, had something not worked, it would have been um, such a public and colossal failure, um, but knowing that that was okay, yeah. right? Like, there's, I think there's this distinction between take risks and take risks and it better work out. Yeah, well, you know, like we we did our homework, we did our preparation, and you know, this it's it's a big endeavor, and it it, it may or may not it work. It may or may not work, and, and and that's okay. I mean. Yeah. Just just last week, I had uh, one of our teachers. She was it was her her formal her formal observation where I was going to be in there and the the big one. And before when we were kind of doing our pre pre observation meeting, she came to me and said, "Brent, I'm gonna I want I'm gonna try something I've never I've never done before," which is like, oh, I mean, it's that's exactly what's because how easy is it to go to your 
your go-to lesson in something like that, something that you're comfortable with, that you know you can nail, your, your dog and pony show, so to speak. But she yeah. said, I'm going to try something new. It was gallery learning. So Tim Bedley, if you're listening, 360 learning, she went and got whiteboards, put them all over the classroom, broke her kids into groups, and said, I'm going to try, I'm going to try something. And, and it was fantastic. And it was the first time she'd ever tried it. She said, uh, at the end, she, she said, when we were talking about it, she said, well, I would have changed this or this or this. But I just encouraged her and said, I am so thrilled that you tried something new. And the, the, one of the greatest things I could hear is she said, I'm inspired to try something new. And you have made it safe to do so. So it's like, once again, it's like, I went home with a big smile on my face that day because that's what that's it's like that's what I'm trying to instill. But at least for that, at least one of the teachers feels that way that yeah. she was she was comfortable enough to to take a risk on a on on the big stage, so to speak, in terms of that formal yeah. observation. And she's she's new to the school, so she's <laughs> this is like one of her first ones. So that was that was fantastic, but. Um, it's tough. I mean, one of the other things that we're doing in terms of taking risks as an admin is I'm our staff this year has been taking a look and reflecting on our homework practices. And I know it, over the summer that was one of the things that I wanted to do was basically ask teachers to really ask themselves two questions in terms of homework. What are we give? Why are we giving what we're giving? Why are you assigning what you're assigning? And then number two, what are you doing with it once you get it back? Because if you can't answer the question, question number one, like why am I giving it? Well, it's because we've all what we've always done. Not a good answer. No, it's not a good yeah. answer. And if the answer to question number two, what are you doing with it when you get it back? If the answer is nothing, or well, I'm just checking it off, or that's not a good answer either because what happens if they're doing it wrong? It's practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. And so, but as far as risks, that's <laughs> tackling the subject of homework that has been around forever. That's, that's a sacred cow for many. Yeah, and, yeah for sure. Um, yeah. So I, I remember with the first day that, that we kind of brought to staff and we're talking about it and, Trying to tell them, like, hey, guys, this is not Brent standing in front of you saying, stop giving homework. and stop. It's we need to look at what we're doing, not just in homework, but everything. And I'll be honest, I <laughs> it was a little uh, frightening to, to, to see what the reaction could have been. And pleasantly surprised, it, it, it was pretty good. And a lot of them were like, this is fantastic. We, we, we need to ask these kind of questions to ourselves. And it's a, slow, it's a slow road, and that's okay. But I've already had uh, a few teachers who have modified what they're doing because they've asked themselves those questions. And I was the first one to stand up in front of, the, in front of that staff meeting saying, hey, guys, I'm guilty of those two questions I never asked myself those questions. So am I guilty of giving homework assignments that perhaps weren't the most valuable learning experiences? I sure was. And I think if we're all honest, every one of in this room have been guilty of that too. So what are we going to do about it? What are, where are we going to go from here? So, But definitely a risk. So, Well, Bill, thank you, man. <laughs> I, yeah, absolutely. I I have enjoyed the conversation. Hopefully, uh, mom, dad, and my brother, and anyone else listening have gotten something out of this. And if you're a teacher listening to this, uh, and Bill, you can chime in on this. I mean, what what would you what would you encourage a teacher who is thinking of stepping out of the box? What what, what would you say to that teacher? Well, so I think there's two parts to it, right? Like, just try something, <laughs> right? There's yep. there are there are certain jobs where if you try something new and it doesn't work out, things go very, 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 very badly, right? <laughs> sure. If you're an airline pilot, you do not want to be taking yeah. a risk with, you know, your methods of landing. Yeah, or, you wanna, you wanna or a heart like surgeon or something like that. Super safe, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, let's, let's stick with that. You know, whatever the oxygen mix is, like, that's locked in. Um, you know, like, for, for our lessons, there's, I think there's this fear of trying something new that it won't work out, um, and it, it doesn't need to. No. Right? Even when it's this big formal observation, 
um, it doesn't need to work out. Like that's not that, that's not what learning is about. It's not like that. That's so like teacher centric. Yeah. Right. It's so hard to let go of that. So I think just like making that conscious decision of I'm going to try this new thing, and it doesn't need to work out. Um, and then if you even name that for students, hey, I'm going to try this new thing, and it probably won't work out. That's fine. Yeah. Right. You know, I had so many lessons when I was teaching, especially with you know some pretty high you know, new tech stuff that um, just colossally fail. Like, first time I tried Minecraft, I had no idea what I was doing, and that's yeah. fine, yeah. right? Like, that's totally okay. Um, so that's the first step. And then the, the second piece of that, I think, is, is find your tribe, find your people, uh-huh. where um, it doesn't feel strange and weird and exceptional. Um, it's just, like, this is just what we do, Yeah. you know? So when I'm thinking about what I'm doing as an administrator with you trying to, to infuse technology meaningfully into the classroom. Um, it's not, I, I don't feel like I'm on the cutting edge of things because yeah. everyone that I talk with about this stuff is doing similar things. Yeah. It just it feels normal. Um, you know, so trying to find those people, you know, like you and I met, um, through Q, right? Uh huh. Yeah. You know, so just consistently going to, to all the Q conferences, the two big ones, national and fall Q, uh, and just kind of finding the people who are, are like-minded um, and just continuing to stay in contact with them um, makes it feel more normal than it otherwise would. Absolutely. And then once you, once you have your people, then you're like, well, this is just what I do, uh-huh. right? You, you kind of get in that, that habit. You learn that. You build that muscle of, of let me try this new thing. I think there's something here. Let's let's try this thing. Yeah, so I think that the trick is to try this new thing Right, and then once you get that, that kind of normalizes it. And then once you connect with those other people, having those conversations, this is just like another normal thing that you do with students. Yeah, and one of the things you said about your students won't care, like if you mess up or something like that. I was just rewatching that Rita Pearson, every every child needs a champion TED talk, yeah. and she was talking about how she taught that math lesson that one day and and taught the whole thing wrong. But she was so into it, and she came back the next day and said, boys and girls, I'm sorry, I messed up. And their response was so priceless. It was, that's okay, Mrs. Pearson, you were so excited, we just let you go, type thing. <laughs> I mean, so the, kid, the kids will help you. So, yeah. and, and, and from an administrator perspective, I mean, if we've got any administrators listening, do everything that you can to encourage it. And by that, again, it's when you see them trying something new, praise it commend it say yes that was great and 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 let them know it's okay if it doesn't go perfectly because the more you try something the better you're going to get at it and if you don't try it you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna get better so you got to you got to put yourself out there so yeah that's awesome that's it yep well bill thank you man hey so appreciate you joining us if listeners want to get in touch with you want to check out what you're doing online where can they find you yeah, so my username is the same everywhere, Bill Selleck, um, creatively titled. So BillSelleck.com, on the Twitters, as my mom calls it, at Bill Selleck. These days I'm spending an awful lot of time um, sharing my story, my school story on Snapchat. So if you've not been over there, head over there, give me a follow. Same username, Bill Selleck. Fantastic. Well, Bill, thank you, man. I will, you're going to Q, right? I am. I will see you in uh, about a month and a half there. Looking forward to it. Thanks again for taking the time today, and thank you for listening to this episode three of Teaching Tales. Remember, you can find us at my website, brentcoley.com, on the podcast page. You can also subscribe in iTunes or Google Play, and if you like what you hear, give us a review. I would appreciate it, and tell your friends. All right, everyone, thanks so much for listening. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.